Hello, people. She's a TEDx speaker, keynote speaker, transformational coach, value-based leadership specialist, servant leader, storyteller, changing the world with stories. She strongly believes that once hearts meet, speak and bond, issues such as poverty, education, empowerment, health, and many more stand a better chance at being solved. Is also a John C. Maxwell licensed coach, speaker, trainer, and a teacher. What else? So many things to say. She is also a Toastmaster and has been voted in 2015 as one of the top 10 speakers in the Arab world, except for Saudi Arabia. In 2015, she also delivered a motivational speak speech at George Washington University for graduating students. So people, this is Daniel Tokat in Monday Talks. Join me this time to welcome Sadiqa Kirby. Sadiqa, how are you today? I'm fine, Daniel. Thank you so much for having me with you today. And I'm so honored to share the platform with you. This is our pleasure. And this is really an honor for me to have you on board as my guest. So first, to, as first, you know, how do you define when all of these things you have accomplished already, so how do you define Sadiqa? What, what can you say about yourself? Well, uh, I can say that Sadiqa is a bundle of many things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the best definition I like to give myself is that I'm human in the making. There's still a long way to become human. We're born under that label, actually, but... Uh, I feel that one of our purposes is to accomplish uh, becoming a human being with all the characteristics and traits that are inborn uh, within us already. So we're here to develop those, to bring them out into the open and to embrace our humanity. And uh, yeah, I'm on that journey. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's like you are moved, you have moved recently to Dubai and founded an NGO company, right? And and you call it Kun Insan, being human. Actually, this is my NGO back home. Um, mm. Here I started my consultancy under the name of Kun. So mm. Kun uh, stands for B in English. And I believe that we need, first of all, to embrace uh, the gifts that we have and discover that purpose, because I also believe that purpose precedes existence. So it's already there. It's already installed in us. Uh, we only have to delve within us and find it, discover it. And once you uh, bring it into the open, uh, you become or you are the bee with the gifts that you have already. So and so, a con, a consultancy, if you want, uh, we help people embrace their potential, possess their haves, achieve their dues in order to be, in nice. order to you know? Okay, when you explain about it, it's, it's uh, the purpose of this, uh, uh, let's say, firm or company is to bridge the gap among people from all walks of life through storytelling. So storytelling. Uh, when I think of storytelling, I think a lot about you. So tell us how is that related? Well, you know, uh, we deliver a lot of uh, trainings, a lot of type of workshops and stuff. But what brings everything together is storytelling. Because when you bring into your training or your workshop or your speech or whatever you are sharing with your audience, when you bring your personal stories, you really live an impact. You really uh, help, you become credible in some way that people uh, buy in whatever you are offering and you are uh, presenting. And when they see that you have overcame many challenges, they the, the only thing that occurs into their mind, if she did it, I can do it. 
So the storytelling part plays a huge role in, in wherever you are presenting to a certain audience because it helps them discover who they are, especially when you show also your vulnerability as a human being, everybody feels empowered. Mm, interesting. So what is the power behind this storytelling thing? And is it a skill we can learn it or is it like a born gift? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's installed, it's there, it's inborn. We are born storytellers. But unfortunately, our lifestyle have taken us away from that skill because everything nowadays, especially, is being done through a screen and there is no, uh, there isn't much of this human bonding. I mean, since the beginning of time, we used to share or the news or any information used to reach people through stories. There was no TV, there was no internet, there was nothing. We heard the story of, we learned about the story of a certain people. And then even uh, our creator, I mean, he talked to us through stories in all his religious books, whether the Bible, the Quran, or uh, the Old Testament. If you just open them, it's filled with stories. And uh, this kind of touches the heart of the human storytelling it's not only it, it brings the balance if you want between the logic and the heart it is what we call the emotional intelligence and this is how a bonding happens because you're talking both to the mind and both and at the same time to the heart and it brings out this human inside of you that makes you human i mean sometimes when a speaker stands on that stage and mm. people feel like they're looking upwards but when you talk heart to heart and you share your stories you you are on the same level you bring that equality into the room with you interesting um also to know like i know everybody can tell a story what happened to you yesterday what was the um, uh, challenge you have overcome, everything like that. But some people are very interested to listen to. They grab your attention to the maximum. But while others just like, oh, okay, passing by. So what scale or what's the difference? How to attract this kind of, you know, everybody can step up those, uh, the step of um, the stage, but storytelling itself is like, when you when you when you create this silence among the whole room of hundreds of spectaculars, and then mm. all of them are just waiting for you, word after word, while others just like ah oh, okay uh, they continue chatting and stuff. So what what what's the difference? How you can let's say master the storytelling. Thing? Okay, so definitely it's also a skill that you can build on, you know. Uh, it is true that it's inborn and every single one of us can be a storyteller. But of course, there are certain skills that you need to uh, learn and build on. Like, for example, one of the main things you have to know that you are addressing an audience uh, and those people are listening to you orally. So when you are writing your story or your speech, you are writing for the ear and you are not writing for the eye. Mm. Because when you're writing a kind of essay or, or any story, even a book, I mean, uh, your reader can go back, can flip back the pages to, to understand what was going on. But when you are speaking, you're writing for the ear and people cannot rewind you. So mm. you have to have short sentences and simple sentences, plus you have to have figures of speech and uh, try to create as much images as you can in the heads or in the brain of uh, your audience. And this is how things stick in their mind at the end of the day. Also, you have the method of repeating a few words. Maybe you would choose a, a word where you keep on repeating all through and also it gets stuck in uh, your audience's head. It could be your title, for example. Well, one time I had a speech called Shake It Off and mm. I was repeating the word Shake It Off all along mm. and people realized it. it. It stuck there. Yes, in because their minds. 
Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I'm, I'm focusing on stories because you really just grab my attention every time I meet you online with with the kind of words you select. And where I, I went out of curiosity uh, to your TEDx talk and it was there, Uncle George story. Mm -hmm. um, my question here, was it this story that twisted your life because you were young and then you started to have a different perspective to life? When was your perspective widened to start dreaming and achieving your dreams? Would love to mm -hmm. know what what moment you consider in life was the big change? This point, uh, exactly this point that you mentioned was really a huge turning point in my life. Uh, but let me clarify something. As Lebanese, we really lived as one. I mean, the country was known as the Paris of the Middle East or the Switzerland of the Middle East. And no one knew who was who at the time. I mean, 18 sects live in that country and we never questioned where we came from or what was the religious or political background. We mm. were still Lebanese. But when the civil war happened, um, I mean, everything flipped in a, min in a minute and everybody became kind of extreme in their own way, if you want. And they took those um, stances where I am the right one. I am the one with the yeah, right yeah, uh, or perspective. So when everything tumbled on that day, when I lost my friend and her family, uh, I really was uh, surrounded by um, one type of people. There was no more this variety. There was no more the social cohesion, it all broke down, you know? And yeah. a child, it's always important to have a role model in front of you. And a child follows in the steps of the role models, whether they are adults or media or, or whomever, a certain leader maybe. And, and when you are surrounded by this environment, when you hear always the word of anger and hate and revenge, you cannot but become one of those especially as a child you don't comprehend and you cannot analyze until two years later when uncle george came in and he broke that stereotype again mm. and he showed me uh, that first of all the first lesson i learned uh, there and then was never ever generalized not all people are the same so and then he me... he rolled my the... away yes let me just like um uh, put a, a, a new and small question here. Do you believe that only pain, pain, can be the main drive for the biggest change in life and changing the character and way of thinking, or might be the other factors? It's not pain. Maybe what what pain is for me is different when it what it is for you because thing, things are relative. I mean, maybe uh, for some people, losing their phone is a huge pain. And uh, for others, civil war, huge pain. So this is something relative, you know. Yeah. But I always I always uh, compare, first of all, life to our heartbeats. Oh, you know, those ups and downs. Yeah. So... We are alive with those ups and downs. We are growing those ups and downs. If there is no down, there is no growth. There mm -hmm. has to be that moment. You can define it the way you want. Pain, suffering, uh, learning, failing. You can define it the way you want. But there has to be this moment where people reflect on and then they stand up with a new growth or a new perspective in order to continue and again, when the heart, when we die, the heart goes flat. Mm. Nothing's happening. Well, imagine nice. your life. Yeah, imagine your life flat, a flat mm. line, from beginning to end. How yeah, especially when we see it in the movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure it would be boring. There wouldn't be any learning happening. No growth yeah. happening. And also here, I would like to bring the beauty of uh, 
of uh, I mean the the, the diversity. Mm. If imagine also if we are all the same. I mean, all men or all women or all of a certain age or all of a certain background, educational, religious, whatever. Where would the growth happen? Mm. True. I mean, I need you. I need the other, the people whom they call the other. I need that. I call them partners in life. Mm. I need that partner in order to complete me. And as leaders, the first thing you should be aware of your uh, are your weaknesses. We should be aware of our weaknesses. I cannot be perfect. So I, example, Sadika is good at speaking, but Daniel is good at branding. If I'm good at branding, I wouldn't need Daniel. True. We need Very to true. complete the puzzle. I mean. <laughs> Very interesting perspective. And, you know, the time is very limited and I try to squeeze everything, but you, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, so um, uh, just getting out of all boundaries I have to, I have set for you in this, in this conversation, the mic is yours and we want to wrap up. So whatever you would love to address to the audience, it's yours. What you would well, like after, to say. Yeah. Kind of a summary of, what I just said, um, Uncle George taught me or showed me a way of completion and not competition. We are raised usually everywhere, starting from family to school to everything to compete. You always have to be that winner or you always have to be in that first place. While Uncle George taught me, no, we need to have a life of completion. We have to look at things as complementing each other and not competing with each other. So I really, I really, and from my heart, I would love to see the world coming together in that completion state and understanding that I cannot do it without you. I mean, one hand cannot clap. We need the other hand to clap. I, I cannot do, my do hand it without with your you. hand. And no. once... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And once we have this perspective, we really understand others. We really bring, start bringing others into our lives. And uh, um, especially nowadays that people have lost most of their values, especially leaders. There are no values. Uh, and you feel that everything has taken a different aspect. Like, for example, I hear it from students, cheating is is bravado. <laughs> oh. I mean, this, I'm intelligent because I know how to cheat and no one can catch me. So things has really changed and it's uh, important really to, to look at things that from a com completion perspective and not a competition perspective. First of all, lots of stress disappears. And I would understand that I need to have a team, a diverse team that can help me get uh, through to my goal. Very nice. And I'm sorry, but I have to wrap it up here because uh, I always try to stick to the 10 minutes, but we exceeded and I think we had to have Got it. more <laughs> more time, a lot of more time, more episodes, because you have a lot to say. and. Ladies and gentlemen, that was in a very short time, Sadiqa uh, Kebi. Um, if you're interested, I'm sure you will find it very interesting to listen more and get in touch with her. That was Daniel Talk of Monday Talks. Stay tuned with me for more great minds to meet, more great stories to, show, to share. Thank you, Sadiqa, for being here with me today. Thank you, Daniel, for the opportunity. Thank you so much.